Hi, I'm David Hanning with Dental TI. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important elements to getting great digital x-rays, and that is positioning that sensor comfortably. And when you use correct holders like the Trollbike Camera for paralleling, it makes everything easy. In this video, we're going to show you some additional tips like using a cotton roll for upper posterior PAs, or any PA for that matter, to stabilize the holder and to add to patient comfort, as well as using a two by two to cushion tori or other areas where it may cause discomfort if the sensor contacts that area. So all of these keys in terms of positioning are guided by the positioning holder. We're showing you the Troll by Camara. You may like RIN positioning holders. If so, the RIN XCP Fit will work in the same way as the Troll by Camara. So all of our tips associated with the Troll by Camara translate to the RIN XCP Fit. Um, without anything further, let's watch the video. So the first holder we're going to talk about is the posterior PA holder. It's the Troll by Camara and you'll notice it's yellow, that's the color coding. There's a detachable ring that fits on a little groove here for paralleling. Just fits on the groove and then it locks into place and you can pull it along that rail. And this holder can take upper posterior PAs and lower posterior PAs. We're going to demonstrate taking the upper posterior PA. I always say have a cotton roll. It's very handy for stabilizing the sensor. We're going to use the middle of the patient's palate where there's the most space. I'm approaching at a 45 degree angle and then I take the biting surface of the troll bite and push it up against the maxillary occlusal surface to stabilize. I then take the cotton roll between the mandibular surface and the bite stick on the troll bite and put it on the mandibular. Close please patient can close comfortably and we maintain the angle that we need to pick up the apices. When you're taking this x-ray, the x-ray tube will be flush with the alignment ring like that. Now if the patient has a shallow palate, you can always raise the tube up, drop the angle a little bit. I recommend about a half of an inch up, dropping the angle and that will allow you to pick up the apices. I only recommend doing that if the patient has a really shallow palate and you're not able to get the apices with the correct angle here. So that's the upper posterior PA. The lower posterior PA is used with the same holder. When it's configured for an upper right posterior PA, it can simply be flipped over for the lower left posterior PA area. When you're taking this x-ray, the key is pushing the tongue aside and again getting into the middle of the patient's mouth, pushing down on the mandibular surface, close please, then having the patient bite. If the patient has a difficult time biting open, you can always put the cotton roll, bite please, on the maxillary occlusal surface, which will again help stabilize and maintain the angle that we need to pick up the apices. So here, you would simply have the x-ray tube parallel and flush with the alignment ring and if you needed to get a little lower you drop the x-ray tube down elevate the angle and you can pick up the apices if you miss them by having it properly aligned here. Now let's move on to the bite wing holder. The yellow troll bite can be used as a posterior holder and a bite wing holder. To use it as a bite wing holder recommend that you put it in and pull your finger here on the back of it to clip it around the sensor. You don't want to slide it in because you'll tear the, the plastic baggie. Now the holder has alignment has an alignment grid on it and this grid is to aid you in opening contacts in the posterior area of the mouth and when taking bite wings. Turn please. Here open here I look at the patient's contacts and I want this grid to align with those contacts. So the lines that are going perpendicular to the sensor 
should be bisecting the posterior mandibular contact. You'll notice here, I place the binding surface down on the mandibular occlusal surface. I've got the sensor in the middle of the patient's mouth, and I have them slowly close. Good. And now we've got the correct alignment to get the posterior mandibular contacts open. Here we would be flush with the x-ray alignment ring and the x-ray tube. And if we had that arrangement, we will get those posterior contacts open. The key in taking this x-ray and making it comfortable is to make sure that as you're placing it, you're paying attention to the bony ridge behind the lower anterior teeth. You want to make sure that you avoid pushing or jabbing the sensor into that region. So I always say to visualize where you want the sensor to go ahead of time and then go there very deliberately and very quickly so you're not moving the sensor in the mouth and initiating the gag reflex. Now taking the anterior, or the premolar bite wing, you simply shift the sensor. It's a much more extreme shift than you probably are going to imagine. It's not like film where you just pull it forward. Every sensor has a little bit of an inactive area around the perimeter and that means you can't just pull it forward and have the sensor pick up the entire image. You have to shift it. These lines will be bisecting the premolar to canine contact. So here notice I'm shifting the sensor to the other side of the mouth. Go ahead and close please. And we've got more of an angle coming forward. We're actually bisecting that premolar to canine contact with the lines open. So that's how you take the bite wings with the yellow Camara holder. Another troll bite product that's designed for taking bite wings is the red Camara holder. The red Camara bite wing holder holds the sensor on the long axis of the sensor top and bottom, whereas the yellow holds it on the short axis. Uh, they both work. Um, I really prefer the red holder because it allows you to get more even bone levels on maxillary and mandibular. Uh, with the yellow, the sensor can slip within the holder and you would pick up more of the maxillary bone than the mandibular, whereas the red holding it here does not allow it to slip vertically. So if you want to use that, you can. Placement is the same as with the yellow. Grid is here for alignment. You want that to first bisect the posterior mandibular contact take that x-ray, then shift the sensor to the other side of the mouth, close, have it bisecting the lines, bisecting the canine to premolar contact, and then take that x-ray. Incidentally, if you're not lowering the exposure when you're coming forward to take a premolar bite wing, pull the tube head back about a half of an inch, and that will help you avoid getting premolar burnout or cervical burnout in the premolar region. The next holder that we will be covering is the anterior Camara holder. It's color coded blue. It's got a little white bite block that slides onto the holder here that the patient can bite on and that it helps stabilize for anterior shots. It takes up the uh, additional space. It also has the alignment ring. I normally push the ring back closer to here where it flares out so we can clear the nose on an anterior PA. So here we've got a number one sensor that we've got covered and ready to go for an anterior shot. I typically recommend the smaller sensors if you're just taking one or two teeth on the anterior region because it's far easier to place. So here we're going to go in at a 45 degree angle. I pull the cord to the side press the bite block against the upper incisal edge and have the patient close down. Here they're actually able to stabilize the sensor holder between the lower premolars. If they were having a difficult time, again, we could use the cotton roll. Open slightly. Close. To take up the space and make it a little easier for them to stabilize. Here, when you're taking the x-ray, the x-ray tube needs to be flush with the alignment ring, and then we will pick up apices to incisal edge. Now, with the same holder, we're going to take the lower anterior PA. The technique for that, simply go in here, 
push down, close. Notice when I turned the sensor and pushed it down into the patient's palate, I made contact with the incisal edge with the bite block and made sure that the patient was able to close. If they had any difficulty closing, again, the cotton roll comes in handy. Go ahead and bite. Here to take up the space. Not always necessary, but it makes it much more comfortable for the patient so they're not pressing the sensor down into the floor of their mouth as they're closing and trying to stabilize. Here, technique is the same where you're flush with the ring. Now, if the patient had a shallow palate and you were having a difficult time picking up the apices, you would drop the tube head down and elevate the angle a little bit and that would allow you to capture the apices. One thing that we need to mention is that when you're taking the x-rays with any alignment system, you need to maintain a consistent distance. Uh, the exposure level varies by the square of the distance factor, so distance is very important. When we come back with the tube head, we're going to decrease the exposure. Now in general, you want to stay at a consistent distance so you're not varying the distance. When you come forward for a premolar bite wing, that's one of the exception shots where you can bring the tube head back a half of an inch so you avoid the cervical burnout and the incisal burnout. Alternatively, you can drop the x-ray exposure one increment and that will do the same thing. So keeping consistent distances with the tube head is very important. The other thing that is really important when you're taking x-rays is varying your exposures. Upper posterior PAs require the most amount of exposure because we have the most bone density here in this region of the mouth. Lower anteriors and anterior PAs in general require the least amount of exposure and when we help you fine tune your x-ray heads, once we get the upper posterior PA value, we know the anterior PA value is about 50% of that exposure time. And bite wings and lower posterior PAs fall in the middle. So when we help your office get correct exposure levels for every x-ray head, we're going to have three different exposure levels we're working with. Upper posterior PA being the most, anterior PAs being 50% of that, and bite wings and lower posterior PAs falling in the middle of those values. One of the most important elements of digital x-ray is getting the correct amount of light to the sensor. If you get too much light, you'll get overexposure, which will obscure areas of the x-ray with looks like dark ink dropped on the x-ray. Too little light will result in graininess, and you won't see the anatomical structures that you need to see. Uh, we've developed a very simple process to help you get the ideal settings for every x-ray head in your office. Uh, the process that we're going to show you next is one that you will follow with every x-ray head and once they're calibrated you'll write down the settings on a little note card, put it by the x-ray head, follow those settings every time and you'll get ideal results. Let's watch. So the process for getting the correct exposure levels has to be done for every different x-ray head in your office. So for example, if you have all Gendex 770 x-ray heads, we can do this for one x-ray head. We're going to be really close for the others. And you may make one incremental bump up or down on the controller if your x-ray head is varying. So let's assume in that Gendex 770 70 scenario that we're taking x-rays on a setting of 40 right now for film. We would have you start at a setting of about 80 percent to begin with would be which would be 08. So you're going to get set up on the position in an upper posterior PA. Position the sensor comfortably for the patient. I recommend using a cotton roll so it can stabilize and the patient makes it much easier for them to bite down. Go into an endo layout for that area. Put the sensor into sensor ready mode and then go to the first setting. Take your first exposure at 08. Look at what you get. Is it burn out? Which means are there dark areas in the cervical area where you should be able to see uh, trabiculation pattern? 
or is it too light and grainy? Are the apices indistinct and everything overall looks light? Depending upon that, if it's too dark, drop the exposure incrementally by one increment. So you would go from 07 or 08 to 07. If it's too light, increase it by one increment, going from 08 to 09. Retake the x-ray. And do this until you have a properly exposed x-ray where there's no cervical burnout and all of the detail is very evident in the x-ray. After you've done that, you can give the patient a rest, stop the series capture, analyze the images that you've taken at the different exposure levels, review with the staff which one is the correct exposure level, and now from here, we're ready to verify anterior PAs being 50% of that exposure and bite wings and lower posterior PAs falling in the middle or being 75% of that upper posterior PA exposure. That is really the process for getting correct exposure levels. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and put that on a note card right by the x-ray head. And as a general rule of thumb, if you have a child come in that's slider boned or maybe an elderly person that's slider boned, all of those settings will be down one increment. Meaning if you were taking a bite wing typically on a six, you would go to five. Same thing if you've got someone that comes in that's obviously heavy boned with a lot of tissue, uh, you're going to increase that exposure level on a bite wing from six to seven. But those are the only variances you make. And then from head to head, if you've got burnout where it's dark at those levels, you'll lower it one increment. If it's light and grainy at any of those levels, you'll increase it one increment. And if you do that with every x-ray head and you pay attention to the areas of the mouth and the amount of exposure they need, you will get ideal results and really be blown away by the x-ray quality that you will see. Now if you have any questions on this or if you're having a difficult time tuning it in after your training with the Dental TI Trainer, please contact us and we can go through the exercise with you and help you really fine tune your x-ray exposures. So hopefully today you learned how to replace film with digital and you feel very confident moving forward and starting to take digital x-rays on patients. If you ever have questions that the training video did not answer, please feel free to go to our website, look through our online tutorials, as well as call our office and set up a one-on-one -on -one session with the trainer. Uh, we offer that at any time. If you feel like you're not getting the best results possible, call us. We want you to be 100% happy with your investment in Dental TI and the SUNY Ray. Um, thanks again for watching. We look forward to seeing you online.